So something folks have asked me for and that I've had a hard time finding online is a good description of the parts of what's called the e -Jin -Jin. Um And so this is going to be my take on how I'm currently performing and studying the e -Jin -Jin. Um, and I'm going to break it down into sections. So I'll have another video that's just do the e -Jin -Jin with Chris and you can follow along with that once you come down the movements. But each part I'm going to try to have a separate little group for. So there's a bunch of different sections. Um, I'm going to use what I have found is the English translations for some of these movements and sequences. Um, there is a huge variety of opinions on what makes the Yijin Jing from there is one true form handed down from the Shaolin Temple that is 100% correct, all the way to there is no form of the Yijin Jing. It's a set of principles, and anybody who tells you that there's a sequence around it is making shit up. Um, so the truth is somewhere in the middle of that, right? Um, so this is what I've been doing. I was introduced to this by Dan Harden, who really loved it um, and encouraged us to use it daily. So that's something I've been doing for a few years now, is doing it several times a day um, and just trying to fill gaps in my own training. I use it like physical therapy for martial arts. So this is not, a, I don't consider the Yijin Jing intrinsically to be an internal power or body skill exercise, although you can, like anything, you can add those pieces in. Um, and you can develop more meaning to the movements, but I do not treat it as internal power development by itself. Um, it's much more of this makes my body feel better and helps me heal things that have been bugging me for years. So um, I'll have a couple variations on some areas where most people need to make some exceptions and uh, I'll try to call things out when we can. So um, with that said, let's look at the Yijin Jing. So looking at the Yi Jin Jing's different sections, um, <clears throat> start with opening and the first kind of three movements, which are um, Wei Tuo presents Pestle, is how I mostly see it translated. So um, starting feet as close together as possible. My knees knock in, so this is as close as my feet go, and that's a good point, is that any of these exercises you'd be doing within the realm and the um, shape of your body. So everybody's gonna look different, everybody's gonna feel different, um, you're trying for the overall feel of these things as opposed to like a perfect visual from the outside. So, pulling yourself up from the head. Um, if you do Sang and Kai or a lot of those body skill type stuff, you can think of starting in the Misogi exercise where you're pulling up through the skeleton and letting the tissue kind of soften and fall down. Reaching up, hands open. Really do let the chin come up, open the chest open and step out to just shoulder width ish apart. When lifting, you're gonna breathe in, when exhaling on the arms down. So inhale, open all four corners. Exhale down. Inhale, hands turn up, open the quad, open the shoulders. Here, fingers come in, bow the arms as the hands get pulled to the shoulder. Rotate over, hands up. You should feel a really good stretch. Associate the shoulder and the quad, the hip sockets. So shoulder sockets open, hip sockets open. And release, exhale down. Hands come up, back to the shoulder. A little bit of claw shape. Looking up, pressing up. Really trying to keep the back, mid back, low back full. Shoulders down, looking up through the hands. Turn the hands out, open. That's the first set. Next, plucking stars. Hand is gonna come up and rest just above the glute, below the mid back. Here I'm gonna reach across just comfortably. I don't wanna stretch too far. Try not to feel your knees dip in. So on all these twists, you wanna feel the knee strong on the outside. Rotate it around as far as you can go comfortably, and then pull up overhead. Here I'm gonna let my other hand turn down, and I'm pressing palms away from each other. Rotate back to neutral, hands come up, open wings. Other side, palm up, rotate across, pulling up, and again, pressing palms away from each other, Keeping shoulders down, looking up, legs mostly straight, neutral, hands come up, open. So that's done two times on each side for a total of four. 
Next, next is usually called, I believe it's pulling cows or grasping cows by their tails. It's one of the first lunges. So um, after you've come back from plucking stars, sweep arms up as you weight transfer back, all the way back as far as you can. Step out, reach like you're grabbing a rope. Pull back towards you. Really pull from the mid back. Lift up, step out and down. How far you go depends on you. So same side forward, same side back. Um, and you really want to be doing this whatever height is comfortable for you. So all of these are your high, your low. Um, and they do recommend doing these fairly high and not going too low, especially first thing. So you can build up to lower, um, but even like the first time of the day, stay higher. So pulling up, reaching, pulling back from the back. Reaching out. Notice I'm making the claw shape in both hands. Pulling forward, pulling backwards. Up. Same thing the other side. Reach, pull, step out. I make sure I keep load on my pinky toe. If you let your weight come onto your big toe here, it feels very unstable. So again, always keeping pressure into that IT band on the outside will help with stability. Next movement is called uh, Showing Talons, Spreading Wings. I actually find the names really helpful for the Agent Jing. It helps me memorize it, and they kind of give insight into some details. So it's sort of as a mnemonic reminder for a lot of things. So. Um, like a lot of the Yijin Jing, we're looking at opening the chest, so looking up and looking out is normal and correct. A lot of times it's sort of this like, the head gets pinned down and that stays however you move. With the Yijin Jing the way we do it and the way I do it, looking up and out is really important. So, um, doing one time forward, you've just come back, hands are going to come up, roll back in, go ahead and make talons. So, generally speaking, kind of straight line from finger down and then curve the ends of your fingers as opposed to sort of the morning glory shape that you'll see in some styles. Um, for this, you're doing more of a talon shape where flat up to the middle first digit and then out a little bit, or knuckle. So up, and then hold yourself up from the Ming Men, from the low mid back, as you roll forward as flat as you can go, really trying to push forward Show talons, looking up through the hands, then hands cross, up, follow them up with your gaze. Here, open all four corners, shoulder and hips, as you come back down to neutral. Do that four times total. Boom. So from the side, one thing that's important to note is I really want to hold myself up from the knee men, from the knee back, and I want to try to go forward. So. Obviously, you're going to fall forward if you just purely bend. You're going to go back a little bit, but the attempt is to stay forward, and that's partly done by holding yourself in the knee man. If I come up and I simply lean forward, you can see how far back my butt goes. Um, it's not the way I do it. So up, back, holding me up from the knee man as I push forward, push forward, push forward, push forward. Nine Ghost Strong Sabers is the next one. It's kind of the second of the big twists. Um, and there's a few different ways to do the hand positioning. Again, there's no 100% right way to do the Yijin Jing. I'm simply showing how I do it and what I've, been, what I've been shown, what I've been taught, and what I've found through my own experimentation and work best for me. There's a lot of wiggle room in the Yijin Jing, and you should explore it. So uh, let's talk about the rear hand first. So unlike the first twist, where the hand sits above the glute, the two main ways you can do this one are either by making a fist and bringing that up just below shoulder blades. Sorry, I've kind of noisy street out here. Or the other way I've been shown more recently is to bring the hand up as high as you can get it vertically between the shoulder blades. So two options. Do what feels like is right for you. You're just, again, trying to get this as far up as you can. 
So hunt for what feels best and what you get the most impact from. So right now I'm doing it with the fist or the hand up. So hand is going to come up between the shoulder blades. Here I'm going to reach further. So now I'm going to let myself actually pull out of vertical a little bit as I reach across. If I come back to center, however, you'll see my elbow is still outside of my uh, body line. I'm not reaching across my body, I'm just turning with it. So as I turn, reaching across, sweeping even further around, this comes all the way up. And again, there's differences here. What I'm doing right now is dropping this straight down in this shape. So if I was more flexible, I could grab my fingers. Not there yet, it's getting better. Honestly, I've had shoulder surgery and I have some damage in this one too. So I'm sure none of you can relate to that. So anyway, hand comes up. Reaching, pulling that tissue across, pulling the tissue down, and then bounce. Neutral, open, look up, spread wings. Other side, hand comes up, reaching across, sweeping, bounce. Another way I've seen this done is the hand coming down on the head. Um, that's the way Dan Harden teaches this, where the hand is a little less precise as to where it goes in the back. Um, sweep, and then just dropping this hand straight down onto the cheek, making sure not to tilt the head. So you want to drop this straight down and bounce there. If that's the stretch you're doing, it's fine. Again, no right way. There's lots of different ways, and you're always fighting for what makes the most sense for your body. This is kind of PT, so you're looking for what helps you, not what somebody supposedly did 500 years ago that was correct. So, so the next part after um, the nine ghosts drawing sabers, and again, the saber references a, a sword being held in the back, so this idea that you'd be drawing the sword up off the back is why that's a mnemonic device. So for the next one, typically I see this called as three plates falling to the ground. There's other names for it, but it's three different types of squats. And here's where I modify mine the most from what you might see in a lot of on videos. And that's because I have some limitation in my knee range of motion. And again, this is PT for you. You have to do what's right for your body. So here we're gonna take a slightly wider stance. What I do is I start palms down, shoulders closed, the hip socket or quad closed, and I'm gonna inhale, open everything out. Then I'm going to close them all as I sink into a mild mabu with the hands inside the knee line. So the, as you sink into mabu, horse stance, the qua are going to close as the legs bow. Arms are going to bow, shoulders are going to close in accord with the hip sockets. One thing I really like doing is sitting back and feeling like I'm pulling down into the quad as opposed to loading down forward into my, my mob. I really want to feel this rotation like I'm lifting the front of my knees out and forward. Inhale up. Notice I reverse those four corners. Now we do a medium mob. Hands coming down just to the outside of the knees. Pulling up through the head, filling Ming Min, rolling the hips back in, closing qua, closing shoulders. And try to hang out here until you get a little vibration. That might be quicker, that might be longer, whatever you're at too. And then to come up, feel how opening the four corners will help you stand up. So the qua and the shoulders are lifting you up from that squat as opposed to pushing yourself off the ground with the muscles around your knees. Um, something I did wrong for many, many years, and I'm still suffering for it, so don't do it. <laughs> Use all these muscles around the quad that you need to develop almost everything else you do. Feel how they can be mobilizing in a different way. That the glute isn't just about levering the body up and down. It, it really can contribute to a lot of motion. So, third one is lowest. It's where I make the most difference. Um, See how it goes today. So this is all as far down as you can go. And you can either hang out here. I actually like to roll my weight 
onto my balls of my feet a little bit and help with my knee compression. Keeping this outside full, I don't want to collapse the knees in. And if you're feeling comfortable with that, you can bring the knees down to the ground. This is how you'll see most videos. I could not do this step for a very long time because I just have knee damage. So um, don't do this if it bothers your knees. Just skip it. Here you want to come up. This is part I might screw up because it's hard and I'm not very good at it still. You want to inflate the Ming Men and use the front of your abdomen to fire into Ming Men to lift you up off the ground. So it's very hard to come up from this position, especially if I just am like trying to stand with my legs, you will find it nearly impossible. If you think this is dangerous, put your hands down and just stand up. Like, don't hurt yourself doing this stuff. Hurting yourself doing the Yijin Jing is the opposite of what the Yijin Jing is supposed to do. So let's look at what that move might look like if I do it right and see how it goes. Something like that is mostly correct. There's plenty of other videos people doing it better than I do. That's what you're going for. It's a very powerful skill. Um, it shows up in my sword school a lot. It shows up all over the place. Um, it's hard, and it's hard on you if you don't have the knee flexibility and the development other places. So think about that one carefully. <laughs> don't be afraid to skip going down. Just go down to your low. Uh, hang out there. Come up safely if you do go to your knees and you can't get back safely onto your feet, use your hands. Be an adult, or a kid if you're a kid, but be smart. So this one is typically translated as Black Dragon Displays Its Claws. Uh, I jokingly called it the New Minorian for a long time. If you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you might get that once we get into that. It might help you remember what the shape looks like. So um, our version, reaching out, closing, pulling in, opening the four corners, keeping the left hand tight and low, tight to the body, not clenched. I'm now going to reach across my own body as far as I can, again making that dragon claw shape. Sweep this, letting it pull a little bit of rotation into your leg claws so my feet are going to angle a little bit. Then without moving anything else, I'm going to sweep this down as far as I can go, wrap around my neck or head as far as that will go, and then I'm going to pull with my arm over the shoulder to get a little stretch. Bounce four or five times. Up. Spread wings. Left side. Sweep. Bounce. Up. Spread wings. Two times each side. Total four. Um, and let's talk about the feet a little bit. I am on a vinyl tatami mat with bare feet, and I've been sweating a little bit, so they're a little sticky. How this is often taught is at this point, you should see the feet rotate in place and just kind of smear on the ground. So what that would look like is kind of that, if you watch just my feet. Um, if you're on a sticky floor, that can be bad on your knees. Now, I don't do that when I'm on these floors. So for me, what my guideline is, I go as far here as I can get without my knees starting to pinch and rotate in on themselves because my feet don't slide. If you put socks on or you're out in a grassy field, you're wearing shoes, um, you're in carpet, you should feel your feet smear on the ground when you do this. And that's starting to feel one of the big full body spirals that can happen. Um, don't force it if you're on a sticky floor. So, Bare feet hardwood, don't do that. It's probably not going to work very well. It might be bad for your knees. Same thing, vinyl floor, bare feet, don't do it if it torques on your knees. So, other side, reaching out as far as you can, pulling back with that left hand. If you do sword arts, it's very much like Sayabiki when drawing a sword. Reaching the body all the way across. Sweep this down as low as you can, wrap as far as you can, bounce. Make sure to not release the shoulder when you're at this point. You want to be pulling the elbows apart from each other. So it's like I was going to bring my elbows together and back behind me, as opposed to letting this elbow go soft. You will lose a ton of pull 
by letting this elbow come out and relax. So try to think about bringing your elbows together and back like you're doing like a scat pinch. So um, that's next one. Next we get to the second lunge. Um, this one is a, looks very similar at first. People get them often mixed up. Um, they're very different mechanics though. So let's look at the differences from this one and the other one. Uh, this is tiger springing on prey. So animals um, tend to use the Ming Men area of their bodies, the low back, as a source of power and of mobility. If you watch cats pounce or anything, any mammal, that lower back acts as like kind of like a spring and a shock absorber to propel them forward a lot of times. Um, if you watch galloping, you know, galloping is classic where that low back is super mobile. This is tiger springing on prey. So think about the Ming Men, think about the low back, think about how it can interact. So first we're gonna again kind of come up with that same drawback spreading wings. Here, however, I'm gonna dive forward and down like I'm scooping up water until I come up to presenting flat. Then I'm gonna pull back along that same path for Ming Men. Hands come over the top, this time down, claw shape, and I wanna pull myself forward as much as I possibly can. So I'm up on the ball of my foot, staying on the pinky toe, hands extending down, nose pointed forward, pulling myself forward. Other side, scoop, retreat on that same path, up and over, land. Really strong claw shape, pulling yourself through the knee. Let the heel come up in the front, it'll be more stable. Float the back of the knee. Other side. And spread wings. So this is another one where you need to be the judge of what you do and how low you go. Um, you, you shouldn't do that low if you're new to this. <laughs> um, maybe you have great legs and it's easy for you. Super awesome. Have fun. Um, it, the important part of the movement. So if that's where you're comfortable, go to that height. Right. Close to the end, the end sequence is kind of like a series of different forward bends. Um, they do different things though. So first one, typically bowing down with respect. That's how I see it translated. Um, I'm not gonna murder the Chinese names on a lot of these, so feel free to look them up. There's lots of great resources on that. I'm not a fluent Chinese speaker and no one wants to hear me butcher Mandarin. So um, let's talk about bowing down with respect. This is another one where it really helps teach you the quad and the quad rotation as a source of movement for the entire body if you go there with it. So, big opening, spreading wings up, dropping them down, and keeping the elbows wide. So from here, I want to pull up on the skin on the back of my neck with my hands and then think about pulling that up and over. So I'm pulling up to go down. And I wanna to start to feel that connection, that pull, dropping down my spine, dropping down my back, the fascia of the back, into the sacrum, into the glutes, all the way down. So this is a giant kind of pull over the top. So, boom. and reverse to come up. Um, you're gonna do that four times. Let's talk about a couple details that I find really interesting. There's a point I found with myself and with most people, as you bend forward where it feels like you get caught by your legs and your glutes kind of holding you up and you can't go down any further. The fix for that is to close the claw, to let the legs rotate closed and that will expand through the back of the glutes and it releases up the spine. Um, 
it's kind of a cool feeling when you get it right if you feel it that way. Um, you may even feel pops and cracks across the sacrum where tissues releasing tension and releasing gases that have been trapped in there. So basically from here, for me, that happens about here, which is pretty high, right? From here, pulling up on my head, I actually feel that entering into my glutes through the sacrum. And it feels like I'm pulling directly against that. To release that, I'm going to close the quads, which releases me down. I just keep closing, keep closing, keep closing. Elbows wide. Now to stand up, I'm going to start by opening the quad, opening the hip sockets, and having that cascade up. So I'm still pulling the hip sockets open to help pull me all the way up to neutral. Then I start it over again, pulling down, feel it catching the quad, feel it catching the sacrum, close quad. Four times. Uh, good. So now we're almost to the end. The next is swinging the tail. And it's kind of the last set. There's, there's three directions you're going to do for swinging the tail, and then there's quick closing form. So we're almost there. So, um, this one you're going to time even more with your inhale and exhale than you did on the other one. So in, I have another video out that's going to have the entire sequence that I'll be talking the whole time you can go along. So. Bring the hands together. Now inhale into your elbows. Can't inhale in your elbows. Imagine inhaling into your elbows. So as I inhale into the elbows, this creates kind of a stop on the amount of pressure that's going to get into my head. You don't want to pressurize your head too much with these sort of breathing exercises. It's sort of like a very light reverse breath if you do any breath work. So inhale into the elbows. Palms are going to stay as up as possible. Thumbs out. Rotate and then exhale, pushing down, looking up and out. You can go ahead and close quad like we did the other one. Hands turn over, inhale up. Two more. Inhale up. Last one. Next, we're gonna go to the side. So this is called swinging tail. So I wanna encourage people to imagine you've got a tail right now and swing it. Feel, so this is one of the few times I'm going to let people or encourage people to actually rotate the hips themselves. The whole pelvic girdle is going to rotate. Swing the tail so you get to a stopping point. You'll feel that stopping point based on your knees and where your knees kind of go clunk, that's it. I don't want to, if I go any further, I'm going to have to dive that knee in. Never ever do that. So swing the tail, look over your same shoulder, hands over, exhale down. Stay on that side, back to center. Back again, swing the tail, look over the shoulder, exhale down. Inhale up, back to center, same side. Inhale up, back to center, other side, swing the tail. Down. Inhale, back to center. Exhale. Last is closing. We're going to do one more spreading wings. And then up again. Hands and feet come together, dropping down into basically a mountain pose. Hang out there for a second, opening all four corners. Shoulders open, chest is open. Hang out for a sec. Hip sockets, the quad are open. And then release. That's the end of our version of Jing Jing. I'll put a link in the description for the kind of just walkthrough where you can just kind of go along without me talking about it. But I wanted to have these individual steps broken out as a way to have some more information about how I'm doing it. Again, this is not the right way to do the Jing Jing. I'm sure you do it differently if you're already familiar with the Jing Jing. Um, 
it's really meant as a way for people who maybe have done it with the Song in Kai would like some more information on it, um, or people who just are interested in sort of these Qigong site movements. Notice I'm not really talking about Qi at all. I, I really consider this to be physical therapy. Like this section, set of these sequences is so beneficial if you do it in the right way. Frankly, I think it's beneficial if you do it half-assed. <laughs> um, it sort of informs itself. I try to do this two to three, four times a day when I'm, when I'm feeling good. Um, and it's, it's really improved a lot of things that have been chronic injuries and chronic issues with me. I know that sounds like an infomercial, but it, it's absolutely true with me. Um, you know, we have martial arts of a certain age, <laughs> you pick up injuries. And this is a really gentle way to help stretch and strengthen around those injuries and show you where you have weaknesses and tightness. So um, hopefully that helps somebody. Um, leave a comment below if you feel like it. Um, hope it does some good. Thanks.